We can go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you for joining us today for Summer Tomato Live. Um, this is episode eight, and we're going to be talking about weight loss tips and tricks. I'm really excited about this. So it was actually, um, let's see, a long time ago we did a poll, and this actually tied with the probiotic episode. And I was, at the time, really excited to do the probiotic episode, so I just went ahead and did that one first. Um, but apparently just as many people were interested in, in weight loss tips and tricks. And I'm not surprised, and that's awesome. And I really think it's important that everybody understands the difference between what I'm going to be talking about today and regular dieting or what we all think of as dieting. Um, so just to introduce the show, so Summer Tomato Live is an online interactive classroom where I tell you all you need to know about the food and health topics that you vote are the most important. I'm your host, Daria Pino, creator of the website Summer Tomato, where you can find even more healthy eating tips. Summer Tomato is also where you can go after the show next week when I uh, publish this live on the website, and that will that will be where you can find any of the show notes or any of the links I discussed in today's episode if you want to check that stuff out in the future. It'll be there at summertomato.com. So at, I'm going to be talking um, quite a bit. I'm just going to you know, give my normal presentation. It'll be 20 to 30 minutes. And at, at any point during this, the discussion, if you have a question and you're watching live, feel free to, uh, there should be a little a red ask a question button up at the corner there. And go ahead and use that. And that'll put your question into a queue that I will answer at the, late, at the end of the show. Just so you know, um, the, if you ask more than one question, your last question will be the only one that I see. Your, your, the questions you asked before that will drop off. So make sure you answer them one at a time and make sure that I've answered your question before asking another one. If you, uh, you can also try asking stuff in the text or in the chat room down here because sometimes, um, if I don't know the answer, sometimes some of the other reader or watchers will have an answer for you down there. So you can, you guys can chat it up in the chat room ask questions. And if you want to call in live and chat with me during the show, which, you know, if you have your own like, like weight loss issues and you want to want some help troubleshooting on that, feel free to call in. Um, just make sure you have some headphones so that there is no feedback during the show. Awesome. So, oh yeah. So, and if you aren't watching live, if you're watching the recorded version of this and you want to participate in future episodes because they are so awesome, you can sign up uh, for the newsletter Tomato Slice, which is how you get the password, and that is at tinyletter.com slash summertomato. So thank you all for joining us. The next show will be, actually, normally I do two weeks between shows and like sort of office hours in between, but what I have actually something special scheduled for next week. It's um, uh, reader Patrick Haug. Haug. <laughs> uh, he's uh, from Germany, and I chatted with him recently. He's lost over 60 pounds and wants to chat with me and, and for all you guys to watch, and he's going to tell us his secrets, how he did it. And um, it's a really interesting story, and so that will be next Tuesday. Because he's in Germany, I have to do it at around noon. So it'll be at noon next Tuesday, May 31st. So I hope you guys can join us. I know it's a weird hour. I don't expect it to be a huge, uh, a huge uh, turnout, but if you can make it, that would be awesome. He's got a great story to tell. Okay, so that's it uh, for the intro. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, so no, no questions so far. Awesome. And f obviously, always feel free to stop me if anything goes wrong. Just let me know in the chat if, if the stream did, like, starts failing or something like that. Okay, so before we start talking about weight loss, I just want to make it very clear uh, that... There are two ways, in, in my view, there are two ways sort of to approach weight loss. And so I think it's really important that we start with a clear definition that we know what we're talking about and, and a clear understanding of why you want to lose weight. So I feel like most people fall into the category of the first group, which is they desire some sort of long-term weight loss. They want a permanent solution to being healthy and being a healthy body weight and looking good and feeling good and all that. But then there's also, and this is totally valid, there's also people with short-term weight loss goals. For example, maybe you're, you have a wedding coming up, you want to look great. Maybe there's a reunion, you want to show up an old boyfriend or something and look awesome. And those are totally valid reasons to want to lose weight and that's fine. I just want to say that though, if, if short-term weight loss is your goal, 
that it's, it's really easy actually <laughs> and you don't need me it's because basically for that sort of diet any of them will do just pick one of the low calorie weight loss plans and just stick to it and they all work they all work they'll all work for some short amount of time um, you'll feel better if you choose one that focuses a little more on healthier food you might transition better to a healthier diet afterwards if you focus one on healthier you pick one that focuses on healthier food and, and when I say that what I mean is probably my favorite diet like actual diet plan where you you know follow the daily steps probably South Beach I, I like that one a little bit the zone diet isn't bad you know, slow carb isn't that bad but I don't like the binge days um, I mean, you know, it doesn't really matter pick the one that works for you and 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 go nuts and you know I do recommend cutting you know the, the less sugar or flour you eat, the faster you'll lose weight. Um, but you, like I said, you don't need me for those. So if that's your goal, uh, just pick one and run with it. But what I caution about with the, that sort of diet strategy, my, my only warning to you, anyone who's that's their goal, is one of my biggest problems, and we'll talk about this a little bit in a, in a second, but one of the biggest problems that I have is the, the sort of diet mentality that comes along with those sort of short-term weight loss goals. And what I mean by that is it sort of puts you in this situation where you're either dieting or you're not. There's foods that are, you know, allowed and foods that are bad, and the ones that are allowed are good foods, and you need as much of them as you want. And then there's the bad foods, and you can't touch them ever, and they're pure evil. And, you know, it's, it's this, it sets up this dichotomy that's, like, totally not realistic for the long term. But... So what happens is people get trapped in that, you know, they'll, they'll go on Atkins for a while, and then, of course, they can't maintain it for that long because it's a miserable life. And so after, like, a month or two, they'll, they'll sort of have integrated the, like, these foods are okay, so they'll eat, like, four burgers or something without the buns and feel very virtuous. But then they'll have a breakdown at some point later in the day and, you know, maybe nibble, you know, maybe they'll drink too much or maybe they'll nibble on some fries, and they won't be strict about it. And the problem is you can't, not be strict about it if you're going to be eating like four burgers, and, and because if you're if you start introducing carbs at that point, you totally undo the diet and you will gain weight. And and this is sort of what happens. People think they're sort of still on the diet, but they're not. And it becomes very confusing to people. And it's just not it's not effective and it's not a healthy approach. And and you you, you end up with this very weird relationship with food where you, you're it's always sort of like against you, <laughs> and that's that's no good. So. That is one of my biggest problems with the short-term diets is what it does to your brain and how you approach eating from then on. So I'm not going to talk about those anymore. Uh, today we're going to be focusing on like a long-term, I'd like to say, dietless approach to weight loss. And I think that most people will be, in the long run, much happier with this, even though you won't lose weight as fast and it's a little less glamorous, <laughs> but, but I think it's more effective and it, it bodes well for a longer, better quality life. So the first thing I want to talk about then is sort of continuing with this idea of sort of the diet mentality is that the first priority, if you're going to approach health and weight loss this way, is you have to have the right mindset. And, you, and what that means is you really need to leave that short-term diet thinking behind. And that's really hard for some people. It, it, it was really hard for me. As someone, you know, I grew up in Southern California. If you've ever read my diet history on Summer Tomato and the About section, I, you know, I did, I've been dieting since I was like 11. And it wasn't even, at first it wasn't even about weight. It was just because everyone was doing it. And, you know, it's really hard to get out of that mentality where it's like it's okay to eat food and to not count carbs or not like, you know, spend so many hours on the treadmill every week, you know, you just, you get used to tallying up these things and, you know, it, it does take some practice to actually stop worrying about that stuff and be like, okay, I'm just going to focus on being healthy. But I think that's really what you need to do. You need to focus on health first. And so part of that is that you need to stop thinking of foods as either good or bad because, that, that no one's ever gotten fat from eating one cupcake, right? Like I'm not, like nobody would say cupcakes good for you, but one cupcake isn't going to make you fat. So 
thinking of foods as good or bad isn't really helpful. You have to, it's always going to be about dosage and volume. So, you know, like, and that's what I mean by that, like frequency and dosage. How much are you eating? How often are you eating it? So take foods off the good and bad list and just start to think more in terms of patterns and habits. And you're going to get much farther with this approach. Another thing that is important to remember that if, if you're really getting rid of that short-term mentality, you have to understand that your life is right now. And so your first step toward eating healthy is your next meal. You don't, what I mean by that is let's say tonight you already have on your schedule, you're going to be having like ribs and mashed potatoes. Like that's on, that's on the dinner plan. And so you're thinking to yourself, oh, I'm watching Daria's show. I'm having ribs later tonight no matter what. So I'm just, you know, screw it. I'm just going to go nuts. I'll start my healthy Daria eating tomorrow, whatever. Healthy tomato eating. <laughs> um, that is absolutely the wrong approach because that, that's short-term thinking. There's no more like abandon, you know, wild abandonment just for today and, you know, we'll make up for it tomorrow. You know, every single meal counts and every single meal you need to practice. So let's, so let's say you are going to have ribs and mashed potatoes for dinner and, you know, you know it's going to be sort of a, a gluttonous feast. Work on, you know, if you can't, if, there, if it's impossible already, the menu's already set, you're not going to get a salad tonight. Think about other things you can do to make it a healthier meal even if the food doesn't change. So eat slower. Eat, chew. Take a smaller portion. Ribs, are, they make you full pretty easily. You don't need a giant plate of them. And if you eat slowly, it's much easier to not eat a giant plate of them than if you're just like scarfing them down like a pig. So the next meal that you eat, the next snack that you eat, that's when healthy eating starts and you take it meal at a time. And you just use every opportunity you can to make the healthiest decision possible. And you decide at that moment if it's worth indulging. And it's not like, I'm going to go as crazy as I want right now. That's not what I mean by indulgence. This is like, is it worth having something, you know, a little special because it's someone's birthday or it's some special occasion? And you want to experience that. And that's fine. But you need to weigh that against everything else you've been doing because you know, you know how you've been eating and what your future is looking like and, and approach it that way and not as I'm on the diet, I'm off the diet, you know, I'll start being good tomorrow because tomorrow never comes. It's, it's right now. Be zen about the whole thing. Live in the moment. Um, and like I, like I hinted at with the ribs example is there, there's more way to be, there's more to being healthy and having a healthy relationship with food than just choosing the right foods. So practice mindful eating, even when you're in a hurry, even when you're alone, even, you know, if you, sometimes you have to eat like on the run, like I've definitely, you know, we're all busy. I've definitely been in situations where it's like, I'm going to another two hour meeting. I have no food. So I'm going to be like stuffing my face with almonds on my way to this other place just so I don't like starve. But you can still chew those almonds. You don't have to like inhale them. You know, just practice mindful approaches to food. Learn to chew. Take a breath between bites. Drink water, and and start that today. That you know, you, yeah. What I was saying is that um, it, you also have to pay attention to how you feel. So feeling good should be part of your goal, not just how you look. Because you know, the feeling good part will come first. And the weight loss comes as a byproduct of healthy habits and a healthy lifestyle. And so you can't you can't put the uh, the horse and the carriage in front of the horse. You know, first start to if you if you notice that you're feeling better, be be confident that you're making progress. The weight loss will come. Okay. Okay. So when you start on a path to healthy living and a healthy lifestyle and you want to lose weight, the first step actually has to be, in, in the changes you make, the very first step has to be developing healthy habits. And I know I, I sort of beat this dead horse to death, but I can't stress it enough because so many people try to skip ahead. They want, they just want the weight loss. and. And, but you can't get there until you've set up a foundation for success underneath you. And that can only come from health, health, healthy habits. So basically, you need, 
to build the healthy habits first so that when you start eliminate the, eliminating the bad ones, you have a life still. You have foods you know how to eat. You have a, a way to continue on without feeling deprived. So the way you go, should go about building these healthy habits is always start by looking at the bright spots in your life already. So one thing you can do is, and I'm, um, I'll talk about this more as it comes up, but I think probably for a lot of people, a really good place to start is by starting a food journal. And you can, you could do it with pictures. I, I personally find that just getting a little blank notebook and writing down everything you eat is more effective. And wow, uh, somebody just said in the chat that she's been using my tips and recipes for a few months and has lost 70 pounds. And while I still don't look the way I want, you are so right that change in how I feel is dramatic. That's awesome, Kimberly. Congratulations. It makes me really happy for you. That's awesome. Um, but what I was saying is that a, weight, a, a food journal is going to be very, very – is, it's awesome for a lot of reasons. And the main one is it, one, can help you if you're bad at doing the mindful eating thing because that's hard to learn. It really takes a lot of practice. A keeping a food journal can really – be helpful at making you aware of every single thing that you're putting in your mouth. So, so most people will lose weight by just starting a food journal because they are more conscious. They're just more they're not eating randomly out of a pretzel bowl or whatever. So that's good. But another thing that uh, a food journal will do is it will allow you to go once you have a couple weeks down, you can go through and start identifying patterns. Like let's say you actually like salads, you know. Not everyone does, but let's say you do. If you really like salads and you're looking to lose weight, that might be a place where you can emphasize that more. Eat more salads. Make bigger salads. Make salad instead of a side dish. Make it your full meal and just make that salad a little more substantial. Um, let's say you're the type of person who likes to cook. Usually you cook maybe less healthy things or whatever. But if you like to cook, build on that. Start learning to build, eat healthy food, learning to cook healthy food, finding healthy recipes, exploring your farmer's market. So that, that could be a bright spot for you and just sort of use that as your foundation to build those healthy habits that you need for success down the road. Another example is some people I know, they're, they really don't care what they eat. They just sort of, they just wish healthy food would appear because they'll just eat whatever is in front of them. So that's actually an advantage too. You know, if you're, they're like, you know, I'm not such a big foodie, I'm not such a big chef, I just sort of want food to be easy. You know, if you don't care what you eat, just all, your only goal then is just, is just that you go shopping and make sure that the food in your house is healthy. It's not that hard. You just have, you have to just make that dedication to go shopping once a week. So th these are the things I mean. L write down your food. L start paying attention to how you eat, what your habits are, and try to figure out ways for your own personal strengths to be expanded into this sort of healthy lifestyle. It doesn't matter what it is. And if you have trouble in identifying these... You guys are all subscribers and you have my email address. Like, I'm here to help you with this stuff. So if you can't think of it, uh, feel free to drop me a line or call in and we'll troubleshoot for you because everyone can do this. I'm absolutely convinced. We'll all have different paths, but everyone can figure out how to build healthy lifestyles. And <clears throat> it's not that hard. Or it can be that hard. <laughs> it can be hard, but it's not, it's not impossible. And it's just a matter of sort of paying attention and figuring out what works for you. So another recommendation I make when you're first started uh, making changes is, and I sort of say this reluctantly, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say it because I do think it's important, is to start an exercise program. And what I mean by that is I don't mean that you need to go to the gym or you know join an intramural soccer team, although either of those things are awesome. Just start thinking like active people are healthy, active people are slim. You know, start make sure that you have a way to build activity into your day. You know, it's very hard. I mean, most of us work at desks eight to ten hours a day, you know, and it's really hard to get the amount of activity we need on a regular basis. And so just starting to think of a way to, to be an active person is really important. And I recommend that for everyone. And, and it doesn't, have, like I said, it doesn't have to be the gym. If it's an evening walk after dinner, even during your lunch break at work, just walking to where you're going to eat, you know, stuff like that. Um, and I'll, I'll talk later about tips how to be more active, but just start to think about, <laughs> pedometer top, just start to think about that's like you want to be a slim, healthy person. You're going to, you need to figure out a way to integrate some sort of physical activity into your 
regular routine, not just an occasional thing every other weekend, regularly three to five days a week. Um, so here's a few tips on getting started making changes. So one, I always recommend this to everyone, find in your neighborhood the place that has the best produce. And, you know, I love farmer's markets. I recommend everybody find their farmer's market. If you don't know of any farmer's markets near you, go to the website localharvest.org. And it's a farmer's market, like, search engine. It's helped a lot of people that, you know, my Twitter followers and stuff uh, find great farmer's markets. So start there. If you can't make it to your farmer's market or you really don't have any farmer's markets in your area, I, I always recommend, um, I, I love the, like, little ethnic grocery stores. So actually my dad recently was, he had always just sort of shopped at Vons or Safeway or whatever. And, but because of, you know, my influence, he explored one day around his neighborhood and he found like a little uh, Chinese grocery store in his neighborhood where it's just produce and stuff like that, but they have just beautiful produce. You know, it's pro not all organic necessarily, actually probably very little of it is, but it's all seasonal. It's all fresh. It's all beautiful. And it's, you know, it's very affordable and it's light years better than he was getting at his grocery store. So, you know, look around, explore your town, figure out a place to buy food that you're actually excited about eating. And I think that's a, that's a really big step for, for a lot of people. And, you know, sometimes you don't even realize it's just right around the corner. Like this place was just a couple blocks from my dad's house and he was so excited to call me and tell me. And the other day he was like, I bought kale. What do I do with it? Because you know, he, you know, he'd heard about it from me, but he was—he'd never seen it before. Even though it is at his normal grocery store, um, you know, he didn't notice it until it was on the display at this beautiful new market that he found. So that is a, a big one. Go find a place where you can find the best produce in your town. Um, another thing you can do if you just sort of—you don't really know where to start with getting healthy. Try just get making a general rule for yourself to try to eat something green with both lunch and dinner. So. Start getting used to seeing vegetables on your plate. So if you're normally going to go out and get a sandwich and some chips, try getting the side salad instead. You know, something like that. Or you know, if that's if you or if you only just get the sandwich and don't get a salad, maybe get the salad. Maybe eat a little less of the sandwich. Something like that. Um, try to work some sort of vegetable into your dinner. And just that twice a day green is a good start. It's a good sort of you know cue that you can use to. You know, remember like this one healthy thing you can do for yourself every single day and you just sort of build that habit. And obviously, you know, cauliflower counts, you know, but green is a green green is a nice color. It's a nice it's a nice a lot of really healthy vegetables are green. So that's a great way to just sort of think about it. Um another like home run tip for everyone to start getting healthy, eat breakfast. Eat breakfast, I mean, I say this all the time, it is so easy to nail breakfast. Almost everyone eats breakfast at home. You can prepare a healthy breakfast in 30 seconds to two minutes. Um, I like to eat muesli. If you go back and watch my health style episode number two, um, it's I talk about what I eat for breakfast all the time, and you know I like eggs. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't matter. It's just you can control one out of your three meals in the day. Slam dunk, healthy healthy food. So that's a great place to start. Um, Replace your snacks with fruit. Everybody likes fruit, especially this time of year. The fruit's going to be fantastic from now until, you know, fall or even winter. So, you know, that's a great place to get more fresh food. You, you, you know, if you're buying fruit, you're, you're right near the vegetable stand too, so you can get some vegetables there. Um, I already mentioned start, start with the food journal. I think that's a great way to get started on mindful eating. And learn to chew. Practice chewing. There's this amazing phenomenon in uh, Western culture. I, my friends and my family, they wolf food like you would not believe. It. it makes me so nervous to eat with them now that I've learned to slow down. I mean, it's just, it's like a race to just shovel as much in there as possible. And just, no one wins. No one wins when you do that. So just slow down, chew. It's a great, great, great habit. Most people lose weight just by chewing more. I kid you not. <laughs> so th those are some tips for getting started. And, and you know, and, and experiment. Do, like I said, find your own bright spots. Find what works for you. And just start building the foundation of healthy habits. And for some people, these small changes will result in some noticeable weight loss. Um, but even, and this is really important, <laughs> it's in italics on my sheet, even if 
you don't experience any weight loss from building up these healthy habits, they're absolutely necessary to build the foundation for success. So you need to do this even if you don't start losing weight right away. So I don't know um, if, if, so let's see, there's an article, I don't know if you guys saw it, you probably, some of you may have, there's an article, there was a success story on Summer Tomato a couple months ago, um, a man who lost 60 pounds, I'll, I'll link to it in the show notes uh, when I put this out next week, a man who lost 60 pounds doing you know, basic health style changes. But what I found what was really interesting about his story. So basically he was like, I, I lost 60 pounds in a year. But if you read his story carefully, what you see is that he actually lost, he actually had been on the journey for two years. And the entire first year he just sp spent learning to eat more vegetables. He subscribed to a, a, a delivery service where they delivered vegetables to his house. And he started building up these healthy habits. And then it was a year later he was like, you know, I'd really like to lose some weight. And that's when he started cutting out the bad food. And when that happened, he already had the foundation there. And he just started losing weight like crazy. So he lost 60 pounds in like just like nine months or something like that. But if you look at it, how he started it actually took closer to two years. But like that, that, that's great. It doesn't really matter because he's always going to have these habits now. And when you think about it, I mean, that sounds like a ton of weight, right? Like you lost 60 pounds. That sounds like so much. But over the course of two years, when you think about it, that's really only like three pounds a month. So that's like less than, you know, less than a pound a week. And so that, it, you know, it can feel slow sometimes, but the rewards are huge. And you just have to have faith that, it, that building the healthy habits is the right path. And, and like uh, Kimberly said, is, as long as you, you can feel the changes, you're going in the right direction. So keep that in mind. I know it's, it's hard when you just, you just feel trapped in, in, in a heavy body and you want to be lighter and you want to be slender. And you, you wanna, you, it's so tempting to try and cheat and you know, do some sort of cl master cleanse or some crazy diet, but really that's not the answer. The answer is the, the healthy habits and the slow weight loss because it's, it lasts forever. Um, awesome. So once you have the steady routine and you're eating healthy foods regularly, that is when you can start experimenting with cutting stuff out and actually inducing your own weight loss. But like I said, don't skip to this part if you don't have healthy habits first. So that's not going to do anybody any good, especially not you. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> a couple things to keep in mind. One is that everyone is different and different things are going to work for different people and different things are going to work for people with different lifestyles. So there's, you know, you have, we have different metabolisms, but we also have different responsibilities and what works for you or what works for someone else isn't going to be the same. Um, so, and, and one thing that, I, I also think that weight loss is, is different for people with different amounts of weight to lose. So if you have a lot of weight to lose, let's say you still need to lose more than 20 pounds, like if you if you need to like put down 40 or 50 pounds, something like that, or even more, um, for, for that sort of situation, I, fi I find that people do a better on low carb diets, just FYI. And, you know, I'm not promoting going on a low carb diet, but if you look at the way I eat, though I don't like the word low carb, I really don't eat a lot of carbohydrates because, as you probably know, I I'm pretty down on sugar. I hardly ever eat sugar. I really don't eat a lot of refined grains at all. And I do eat carbs. I eat intact grains. I eat potatoes. I eat fruit. Um, and I do have occasional sugars and breads and stuff, just not very often, but when it comes down to it, I, it is pretty low carb. But the reason why I'm pointing this out specifically if you have a lot of weight to lose is because people that are very overweight tend to be insulin resistant. And you can be insulin resistant and not be very overweight too, but from the data I've read, it once you're insulin resistant, the best way to get over that hump is to just sort of start out with a low carb approach because that will help restore the insulin resistance and, you know, get your metabolism back working again. And, you know, at that point, then you can maybe experiment with putting in a little bit more carbs here and there. But generally, I think if you have a lot of weight to lose, you might have more success with a low carb, more low carb approach. Which, and that just means being slightly more strict with yourself on specific kind of foods, specifically sugar and processed grains. I mean, and maybe even intact grains, like if you're very insulin resistant. So, and another thing is, like, like I said before, like, don't try to lose weight too fast. It, do, it doesn't, 
it doesn't help you. You, you want to lose fat and you want to lose it properly. So don't look for quick fixes. Try to avoid those temptations and go the slow way. And focus more, like, and this is sort of goes along with the low carb thing, focus more on diet composition at first rather than portions. So make sure you get your balance right before you start cutting back on portions. And I'm, I'm going to talk about portion control in a bit, but I just want to make that clear that if you have a lot of weight to lose, portion control is your last step. I know it sounds like it should be like your first step, like you need to eat less, but the first thing you need to do is eat better, and then you can work on eating less. So, and if you're like um, the, in, in the category of people that, does, that wants to lose some weight but doesn't necessarily need to lose a ton of weight, so you only want to lose 10, 15 pounds, something on that range, then that's when portion control is going to play more of an ish, uh, a role for you. Moderation and like sort of just finding that balance of how much you can eat of certain things and still continue to lose weight or not gain weight or whatever. So your approaches are going to be different depending on how much weight you want to lose and what the state of your metabolism is when you start. Um, but no matter what, <laughs> if you want to lose weight, my first piece of advice to everyone always is to stop eating sugar. Sugar causes weight gain more than any other food, and it causes insulin resistance. It causes all sorts of problems. We've talked about sugar before. There's another episode. I'll link to it um, about sugar and how dangerous it is. And so, you know, when I when I say how much sugar should you eat if you're trying to lose weight, I say one or two what I would call dessert servings a month. If, if you actually want to lose weight, you really got to cut down on sugar. And, and when you when I'm in those one or two servings, they shouldn't be big either. They should be small. And because you don't need dessert. I mean, dessert is one of those bonus things in life. And if you just, you know, I'm all about like not having deprivation, but like, you know, if you really want to lose weight, the reality is like the, the, the treats can wait. Um, you don't need them to live, <laughs> you know, and just have that one or two a month so you're not like a complete social exile. But, you know, as, as far as in my experience, like cutting out sugar is the best way to lose weight. And what I mean, so so cut down the desserts to one or two times a month max. Um, and just as important, cut out sugary drinks. So this is most people don't even realize how many calories they drink. Um, so I'll, I would just recommend cutting out all soda, juice, cocktails that's a dangerous one I mean those like a margarita can have like seven eight hundred calories <laughs> you know I just imagine you go out and have like two or three of those you know what I mean it's not good um those coffee drinks like you're getting mochas you're getting lattes even and adding some sugar like the bad news and even things like vitamin water and Gatorade just stay away from that stuff and honestly even though technically like diet soda don't have sugar in them you're best getting off those two. And the reason I say that is because your brain is still being addicted to sugar when you're drinking those. You, you, your taste buds still expect that much sweetness. They're, they're sickly sweet. And you will have better success cutting out sugar in the rest of your life if you cut out the fake sugars too. So I recommend cutting those out. I know it's hard. I used to be a total diet coke addict, so I understand. <laughs> but Oh, and I'll, I'll link to the how to break a diet coke addiction in the show notes. Um... And also, if you're cutting back on sugar, and this is probably the hardest part, is looking, keeping an eye out for sugar that's in regular foods. And the reason this is hard is because Western culture is so screwed up that there's sugar in almost everything. And that, this is why I'm so big on cutting out processed foods and not eating at chain restaurants and stuff, because it's almost impossible to eat there and get anything healthy. For example... This is another story I'll link. Um, I did a story on like just sugar content of common foods. And one of the most shocking things on the list was the Thai chicken salad from California Pizza Kitchen. Sounds, sounds fairly healthy, right? Had something like 50 grams of sugar in it. And ju just to put that in perspective, a uh, Krispy Kreme glazed donut had 11 grams of sugar. So, I mean, this has, I mean, it's an insane amount of sugar. And if you want to, I like to say around 15 grams of sugar is your cutoff for, like, dessert. Like, if it's more than 15 grams of sugar, it's dessert. And that includes yogurt, you know, <laughs> most yogurts. Um, but just beware. And so look, keep an keep a eye out for words that sound like sugar in regular food, like glaze, um, uh, caramelized, you know, stuff like that. Just be aware. Ask, ask the server if you're at a restaurant what, what are the ingredients. Check the package. 
I just sent everyone a link about how to f identify sugars in foods that pretend like they're healthy, even though they have like 15 different kinds of sugar in them. Um, so yeah, salad dressings are a big offender. Any sauce, be careful with any sauce. And sadly, that even includes most tomato sauces. Check the labels very carefully or make them yourself. It's not, tomato season's coming right up. And yogurts are another one that's really bad. I was hanging out with some friends the other day. I had this wonderful gourmet yogurt. It was delicious, but you know, I took a bite of it. They, they told me it was this wonderful stuff, and it tasted to me like exactly like a cheesecake or like, um, like the kind of cream cheese frosting you put on carrot cake or something. Like It was delicious, but I, I, I tasted it. I was like, this is like frosting. And, you know, most people can't even identify that as sweet. You know, they're just like, oh, it's breakfast food. But it's not. It's tons and tons of sugar. So be careful with stuff like that. Be careful, be careful with added sugars in regular foods that you don't think are dessert. The, and, again, just the same thing with the uh, – reiterate the point I was making with the Diet Coke is that your goal here is, yes, to reduce the sugar you're eating, but also to reduce your taste for sugar and cutting, cut back on – what your normal taste for sugar is because, I mean, if you really want to keep weight off, sugar is not one of those things you can have like a, you have to understand that your relationship with sugar is always going to be sort of in balance. You can never go nuts on sugar. It's, it's never, it's not good for anyone and it is very fattening. <laughs> so, um, and so to uh, cut back on cravings, rely on fruit uh, and I find that intact grains are very, very helpful for cutting back on sugar cravings because you are getting that low dose of insulin that you're, you know, your body's craving this like high blood sugar dosage. Um, and so by giving it a small grated one instead, which is what you get when you get those slowly digesting grains, um, you know, it makes it easier to withstand those sugar cravings when you're not like dying for some blood sugar. So I recommend that. So step two. Uh, in your weight loss program uh, would be to limit bread, f anything made with flour or any other processed grains. And just, you know, and it's for the same reason as the sugar. It's not as bad for you, but it, it's, it's, it doesn't help with weight loss. You know, it really, bread will really stall your weight loss. And so I would, um, as, a, as a guideline, I would say for myself personally, I limit bread if I want to lose weight to once and bread or pasta to once or twice a week. And, you know, it might not sound like very much to you. And if you eat a lot more than that now, like if you're having it three times a day, you don't need to cut back to once or twice a week right away. You can do it gradually. So, you know, cut, cut down once or twice a day if you're having it three times a day. And, or maybe every other day, skip bread completely or something like that. You can do it gradually. That's fine. But the more you quickly you, you phase that out, and, and start relying more, get your carb sources from more intact grains and more slowly digesting sources, the faster the weight will come off because that can be really, really a slower on, on, on the weight loss front. And I recommend replacing those calories with beans and lentils. Those are great sources of, you know, starches that are, that are going to not really contribute to weight gain and intact grains and nuts and vegetables. You know, I often, you know, at some point I got to the point where I can just skip the starch part of my meal altogether and just have a big, big old serving of vegetables and I'm totally fine. So start to make those changes and weight loss will get a lot easier from then on. Uh, <clears throat> So the, so that's basically, like, those are my main food advice for most people for weight loss. Um, step three, though, I think is also important. And I just want to, I, I, here I have move more. And this is different from the, like, activity that I mentioned at the beginning where I said you should start exercising. Um, this is, like, just stop being your normal lazy self. And we are all naturally lazy. Like, I don't, I, I don't know anyone who would rather, you know not park closer or not have to take the stairs or whatever, but like it's not as bad as you think it is and you need to sort of get out of the habit of being like that sort of daily lazy. And it's actually kind of fun. Like when you, you can kind of make a game out of it. Like Virginia mentioned in the chat room, pedometers are great for this. Make it a game. Like, or I used to have a Fitbit and it tells you how many, like how much you move every day and it, you can like compete against yourself every single day and you try to get it up to like those 10,000 steps a day, which is, you know, the goal. 
Um, and that's great. This, when I started doing this, I, I effortlessly lost a couple pounds just by getting around more. So take the stairs, park far away and walk in and haul those groceries out to the back of the parking lot. It's good for you. Take the stairs, <laughs> um, walk to lunch, walk to visit your coworkers. Take the stairs. <laughs> Even when you're on an escalator, walk up the escalator. Sometimes in a mall, there's no stairs that are obvious and you have to take the escalator. Walk up if you can, if people aren't in your way. I'll say take the stairs one more time. And, um, and you know, volunteer to clean the house, do the dishes, take out the garbage. Any extra little movement helps a lot. Walk around. Like, I once saw a study about how much more weight someone lost or the calorie difference between someone who chose to like clean up and do dishes and vacuum after dinner as opposed to sit down in front of the TV and like have a, another snack after dinner and the difference in calories was like 900 calories or something preposterous over like a three or four hour period. So not that you need to do that every night but you know just go you know just try to think about it differently. That's This is another one of those mindset things like you think you don't want to move more but you do. Start thinking that you do want to move more. And it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't need to be formal exercise. Just move around the house more. Walk to the corner store instead of driving. That sort of stuff. It's, it's actually really fun. I recommend it. And then on top of all this, you can supplement with um, light cardio and uh, strength training when, when you can. But I don't think that's as important as the daily movements, the non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Neat. And I will link to that article as well. And finally, oh gosh, this is taking a long time. Um, finally, uh, the next step is to reduce portions. And like I said before, this is for advanced, advanced people. Do not skip to this step. Do not skip to this step. You, it will backfire. Um, most people won't even need to reduce portions. But if you're like, if you're like, you feel like you already eat really healthy, and you know maybe you could cut out some sugar, but whatever, you're still having trouble like losing that extra weight, like that last 5, 10 pounds, you can start to reduce portions. And this actually does help. Um, but don't starve yourself. And don't cut out more than 200 calories a day. I mean, don't go from like 2,500 calories a day to 1,200. That's not healthy. Um, and, it's, it, and it'll make you starving and you'll end up eating something really bad and you'll be mad at yourself all over again. So don't make that mistake. Just start to use, um, use the measurements you know, when you're eating, like, not am I full, but am I still hungry? And stop eating when you're still hungry. And if you need to eat again later, that's fine. Just get in the habit of taking in smaller portions. Eventually, your stomach actually does kind of shrink. Um, and, and again, this is for advanced, advanced people who only have a few pounds to lose. But the easiest places to cut calories, because they just have a lot of calories, I find is meat, cheese, and other dairy products. So... Although I'm not, I have no problem with saturated fat these days, I do find that the less meat I eat, me personally, the more weight I'll lose. And, and, I, and I don't lose muscle, I'm, I just get lean. And that's just because I feel like I'm already very close to my ideal body weight. So when I just want to lose a few pounds, um, it works. It's very effective for me. But most people don't need to do this. <laughs> I said that like five times, but it's true. So what you should replace these things with. So you don't necessarily have to eat eat that much less, the goal is to reduce calories. So this is where the volumetrics can come in handy because if you just eat more veggies or more beans, that can actually be really effective to lower your overall calorie intake and you don't feel deprived at all. This is, this is the best trick ever. Just, you know, sometimes I'll just have for dinner have like a whole bunch of kale and like some beans. And it's like, you're really full. I had an entire bunch of kale and beans. And, you know, but it's like hardly any calories. And, you know, when you want to lose weight and that's your goal, you know, st strategies like that can be really effective. Um, so here's a few tips. To, to, so reducing portions isn't is easier said than done, right? Because restaurants are like, you know, disgusting and in their sizes. And, you know, you start eating fast and, and it's hard to stop. And sometimes you just want to keep eating. So my recommendations are eat at home. Because anything you cook at home is going to be healthier, and you can control the portion sizes yourself. So if you don't want to eat more than a certain amount, cook a small amount, um, and, and you won't have that problem. Cook simple meals. So this actually is, very, is pretty effective for um, controlling how much you, you want to eat at a given meal. So if you have a very complicated dish, you're going to want to eat a little of everything. Um, but stick to sort of one pot meal type things. Um, stir fries are great. 
I frequently eat, I, I linked to a, a recipe for a bean salad the other day, like stuff like that I have for lunch all the time. It's really great and it's just like a small little thing and it doesn't make you full, but you just feel really good. It's actually ideal for before a workout, for like an hour before a workout because nothing, you know, it's not sitting heavy in your stomach. Um, another trick is to use smaller plates, smaller forks, um, use taller glasses rather than wider glasses. Um, again, chew thoroughly. Eat with other people. Turn off that dang TV. Sit down. Have a proper meal. Eat slowly. Use silverware. Sip water between bites. Put your fork down between bites. Um, don't let yourself get too hungry. Because if you're really hungry, it's really hard to eat a small amount. Your eyes just overshoot your stomach by a lot. So don't get too hungry, but also don't get too full. And learn to feel comfortable with an empty stomach. It's sort of a feeling that you can get used to, but it's not a bad one. And even even intermittent fasting it can be can be useful. But um, there's a difference between having an empty stomach and being hungry. Because your body could still be nourished. So, you know, learn to sort of figure out the, those boundaries and how what what you can get away with for yourself and just go longer between meals if you can. Um, another little trick that I use sometimes when it's hard to stop eating is just brush your teeth when you're done. Once you have toothpaste in your mouth, like you don't really want to eat anymore. It's great. And don't get too drunk because drunk people make poor decisions and they have a lot of trouble with self-restraint. And I've seen it many a time. <laughs> you know, you go out and you have a party and then everyone wants to go get pizza because you've been out late and you don't have any self-restraint and then everybody feels like crap in the morning. So for many reasons. So those are my tips for controlling portions. And that is it. That is uh, what I do when I want to lose weight. And that's my recommendations for people um, to get there. And the last thing I want to cover is um, maintenance. And um, actually, Aisha wrote in with a question, how do you transition to maintenance? And um, basically, the first step, like for me, like I know I'm in maintenance mode when I'm happy. Actually, usually I overshoot the weight loss a little bit, but you don't have to. I'm usually I'm like, oh, I'm getting a little thin, you know, let's, let's, let's add some more food to the diet uh, so that you don't start looking like bad. Um, so the way, so basically you use that sort of diet that you've set up for yourself, the healthy diet as your base. And I mean, for myself, if I just ate that perfect, perfectly, like I explained to you just now, all the time, like if I just ate my vegetables and my beans and you know, my, my eggs and my meats and I never ate sugar and I never ate bread, I would be super skinny. Like I would be way too skinny. It's not pretty. Um, and so what I do is I moderate the things that I know contribute to weight gain, like um, how many grains I can tolerate. So, you know, it is nice to have bread every now and then. I love a good sandwich. I love a good pizza. Um, some people eat zero grains the rest of their lives, the whole paleo movement. They don't eat grains at all. But uh, some people love grains, and they can eat a lot and still not gain weight. So you just have to sort of figure out what works for you. I told you for me it's like one or two times a week or, m or more if I'm, you know, if I'm ready to maintain. Um, and, you know, even with the intact grains, having, you know, you can see how many of those you can tolerate as well. I don't eat grains every single day. Do I? Not every single day, but most days I do. Um, but you can figure out what works for you. And you just sort of, the way you do that is you just, you know, try something new. You're like, okay, I'm going to try buying some muesli or I'm going to try eating brown rice with my dinners this week and see what happens. You know, do you feel good? Do you feel bad? Do you stop losing weight, do you start gaining weight, stuff like that, and just sort of figure out what works for you. Once you know what works for you, then you can do what's necessary to make it work. Um, same thing with sugar and dessert. I don't think anybody should go through life without dessert. Um, and enjoying life is very important. And some people can easily, you know, once you're in maintenance mode, some people can easily have like one to three treats, sweet treats a week, and it's fine. But one thing I want to stress here is that you should not underestimate the importance of portion sizes. So when you're talking about something like a cheesecake or like a Godiva little chocolate thing, those are like 50 to 100 calories per bite. So even if you're going to be like adding dessert to your life again, don't assume you can have like a, you know, cheesecake factory size, like 900 calorie piece of cheesecake and like that's going to be part of your life from now on. Like no one was ever meant to eat that. It's, it's just it's disgusting. So just sort of understand that, like, 
a dessert is like eight bites. You know what I mean? It's, and at, at, a, at a reasonable restaurant, it, that's what, what you'll get. But you should always share a dessert whenever possible. And just be aware that no matter what, dessert's going to have a lot of calories. Um, another thing for maintenance is you can expand your repertoire of food. So when you have nothing to worry about in terms of your weight, go go nuts. Go to the uh, farmer's market and find some really interesting uh, dishes or really interesting ingredients. You can go home and you know play around with different kinds of cooking and you know you know experiment with like Vietnamese food. Now you can eat rice noodles occasionally. See how that works out for you. Um, and you know, get become more of a foodie. I, that's what I that's what I recommend for maintenance. I mean, and then see, you know, how much of that you can tolerate. And you know, you always know what to do. You can always scale back if if you need to lose weight again and you feel like it's getting out of control. But I recommend just exploring more and enjoying more new kinds of food and um, seeing how they affect you. Um, so another thing you can do for maintenance, and and this is a, a very important point, I think, is. Um, Learn to practice mindful eating at restaurants because, like I said, I, rec I definitely recommend eating at home as often as possible if you're trying to lose weight because it's harder at a restaurant. But restaurants, are, even even nice ones, can still give you way too much food sometimes. And so, you know, while you're in, ma in maintenance, still continue to practice the mindful eating and the chewing and the setting the fork down between bites and, and really taking the time and enjoying your food and even being okay with leaving food on your plate. You know, it's... It's, uh, it's something you kind of have to learn, to learn to leave food on your plate. You, you know, we were all told, like, uh, that, uh, I'm worried about my recording. Uh, we were all told that, you know, there's kids starving in Ethiopia and you shouldn't waste food, but the reality is you don't really need that food. If you, you know, if you feel really bad, you can take it into go box and, you know, maybe give it to a homeless person or a hungry person on the street. Um, but, you know, practice that, and that can be part of your maintenance period. Um, and also just build a healthy, healthy, active life. You know, if you no longer are exercising for weight loss, make it fun. You know, just, just build these healthy habits until they're part of who you are. And then you, you won't ever have to worry about this stuff again. Um, and so she also, Aisha also asked me about what are some of the challenges and successes for uh, maintenance. And for me, the biggest challenges, and probably for most people, is always going to be life changes. So... Um, for example, you know, getting a new significant other. Um, boys and girls have very different needs. Some people have different tastes. You know, and adjusting to that it can be hard. You know, it's, I think it's really easy to be healthy when you're single, you know, because you control every single meal. But when you have to sort of please someone else, you know, there's a whole other factor that goes in there. So that can be tough. Um, you know, if you ever have a new job where, you know, maybe you don't have a, access to a kitchen or something like that or a new living situation, like, I am now in a neighborhood where there's no local grocery store. Why is this doing this? Um, by my house. And uh, so it's... Um, dog's making a weird noise. So, you know, it can be really difficult sometimes to have fresh food, and it, it makes it easy to bail on it and sort of be like, okay, well, there's nothing in the house. Let's go out. And so you end up going out more, and that can be a problem. So problems like that can come up. Um, also in SF, and I wrote about this not too long ago, is that one of the problems I have sometimes is too much of a good thing. So all the food in San Francisco is excellent quality. And what happens is sometimes it's easy to justify eating too much because, you know, it's the dishes are only going to be in season for a little while. And, uh, you know, they're made from, you know, organic, local ingredients. And, you, but like, so all technically it's all good for you, but you just eat too much of it. So that can be a problem. Um, and so, and she also asked me to define what is success, and I think that successful maintenance is when you can maintain your health sort of effortlessly, and you can maintain consistent patterns, and that you can learn to deal with these things, like going out to restaurants and stuff like that, without, and, and without the stress of what worrying about how much you can eat or what you're allowed to eat or anything like that. That's to me what success is. And defining your goals and motivation, um, she also asked about that, and you know, she asked, like, do I base my success on what the scale says or how I look? And absolutely how I look. I rarely get on the scale. I don't have one in my house. I use one at the gym sometimes. Um, but, and, and because one of the, so the two main things that I use to judge how I, I'm doing is, one, how my clothes fit, 
and two, how I look naked. <laughs> because, I mean, you know, you know if you look good. And what I've found, which is interesting, is that it, uh, over time, as I've lost fat and sort of put on muscle in the places I've wanted to have it, I found that if I were to guess, so when I weighed maybe um, 10 pounds more than I do now, I, I would have guessed that I wanted to weigh, that in order to be the size I am now, I would have actually weighed a lot less. But because I've put on muscle and because I've put on curves and like, you know, good spots now, I actually weigh, yeah, like I said, I weigh about 10 pounds less, but I would have guessed that it would have been much less but based on the size that I am, like the size pants I wear or whatever. So, you know, the scale can be very deceptive and, you know, the flabbier person I used to be uh, didn't have a very good estimate of what my ideal weight was. Now I have a much better estimate of what my ideal weight is. But um, the scale doesn't really tell you very much at all. Body fat, maybe, but that's a hard test to do. Um, but, you know, the real goal is to be comfortable in your skin and to feel good and to be happy right? We all just want to be happy and healthy. So I, I go on that and don't worry, don't worry about what other people think. Just focus on being healthy and it will all come, I promise. So that's my show. Um, ready to start taking questions. And <laughs> somebody else has a boyfriend problem. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, th that took a long time, but I'll, I'll hang out for until you guys are done with questions. Um, let me just flip to the chat real quick. Uh, yeah, I like um, getting off a flight or two before taking the elevator. That's a great call. Interesting. So somebody said that, uh, Virginia said that if she eats breakfast very early and then at toaster, <laughs> dog's going crazy, and then at 10 a.m. she gets hungry, but if she just doesn't eat it, the, that passes, and, and then she's fine and then just has lunch. Um, but, you know, she might have been inclined to snack, but she realizes she doesn't really need to. Um, so one, this is an interesting question. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to the questions in the ask a question button, but um, one person just asked real quick, why do bodies crave insulin rushes? It's because you've gotten accustomed to a pattern of high blood sugar. You don't crave insulin, you crave, crave, crave blood sugar. And the reason you do is because um, you spike your blood sugar and then tons of insulin comes in to take care of it because that's really bad for your body. You don't want to have really high blood sugar. And what, what happens is you have such an overload of insulin in your blood that all the blood sugar disappears and suddenly you're low blood sugar again. Most of it went into fat, by the way. Um, and so your, your cycles are just really in extremes. And so what you want to do is you want to balance that out. Okay, I can't see the bottom of the chat anymore. So I'm going to go back to the, um, take some of these text questions. Okay. Um, so this is a good one. So how bad is it to have a half serving of dark chocolate, seven grams of sugar, after dinner every day? Well, there's a lot of data actually that eating dark chocolate is really good for you and can help with high blood pressure, can help with heart disease, can help with all sorts of things. So my question would be to put this back to you and ask, are you overweight? If you're not, it's fine. If you want to lose weight, that's a place you can easily cut out some calories. And, you know, there's plenty of other ways to reduce heart disease and blood pressure. Go for a run. So, you know, it's up to you. I think it's not an unhealthy habit so long as, but if you're like, why can't I lose weight? You know, that's, a, that's one place you can start. Hope that answered it. That's a good, good one. So does um, the timing of your meals make a huge difference when it comes to weight loss? It can make a difference, absolutely. Um, a huge difference, it depends. So, so there's a few issues here. So first, waiting too long between meals could potentially make you overeat in a subsequent meal. Um, I, so I, I don't recommend getting too hungry. That, that can be problematic. But there can be benefit from sort of letting your system clear of food. I, there's a lot of rumors I've seen um, on the internet and just people sort of, there seems to be an urban legend that like it's better to eat a lot of small meals than it is spreading your meals. I, I totally disagree with that. Like not only is there no data for that, but it doesn't really make sense to me because it seems like you never really give your body a chance to burn fat if you're doing that because you constantly have blood sugar and your body can constantly use that as fuel. 
Also, what culture does that? Like nobody does that. I mean, the most healthy cultures they eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and you know, in between they're busy, <laughs> and you know, it's difficult to eat reg like often like that. I mean, if, if it works for you, great, but I don't think that that should be a goal necessarily for anyone. I prefer a much more formal meal setting and just sit down and have a meal and then not eat for five or six hours. Um, so, and and it can affect your metabolism, sort of, but I think the bigger issue is how much you eat. Um, but inter there's plenty of data that intermittent fasting is, is good for you for both health reasons and for um, weight loss. And when I say intermittent fasting, I mean like 18 to 20 hour fasts, so not even a full day, but like you, you eat an early light dinner and then don't eat again until lunch the following day sort of thing. Do that once or... I forget, I, I haven't read the details of intermittent fasting, but um, a lot of people do that and swear by it. So, um, if anything, it could be good to have more time between meals. So, that's my take on that. Might be an interesting show topic, fasting. Um, okay, um, so, dairy and weight loss. So, I don't think that eating dairy helps, is like in a meaningful way going to help you lose weight or burn fat or anything crazy like that. Do I think it, if, if, if you're asking if I think it, it makes it worse, um, not necessarily. It's just another food. The only way, issue with dairy is, you know, it does have a lot of calories. Okay, I like this question a lot. <laughs> what is the least objectionable alcohol to imbibe? So there's a lot of data that red wine is good for you. Um, there's actually a lot of data that all alcohol is good for you. So it, it prevents you from dying from a heart attack. It raises HDL cholesterol, which it's kind of hard to do that. Um, and uh, so, I mean, if I'm looking to lose weight, um, I will mostly drink hard liquor, like vodka or, or uh, whiskey with, like, soda and a lime or something like that. Um, alternatively, like, a couple glasses of wine is fine. Beer is, has maltose in it, and that's not really good for weight gain. By the way, I got the recording going again, so that's good. Um, so yeah, I would, I would, I would avoid beer on, on a weight loss diet, sadly. But, uh, the other ones, as long as there's no actual sugar added, like juice or sugar or mix or anything, syrup added, most cocktails have syrup. That's going to be your biggest issue. So yeah, vodka sodas, whiskey sodas, that's what I'm talking about. Um... Do I, oh, I love this question. Do I think counting calories is useful or is a basic food journal a better option? I think counting calories is totally useless. Um, I don't think there's... Uh, well, first of all, most food information is wrong. So most, of the day, most people vastly underestimate the calories they're eating. And a calorie is not a calorie. There's good calories and not so good calories. And so... You know, and they, they impact your body very differently. So I don't. I think you're going to be much better off with the food journal because it it, gives, it teaches you mindfulness and also it may it forces you to focus on whole foods and not calories. So I mean, a calorie is a useful measurement, and you know, and the reason I was talking about calories with like meat and cheese and stuff is because like a steak is like 1,200 calories or 1,800 calories, like really high. And so cutting, you know, eating half you know, half the size of a steak or even 75% smaller than you would normally eat, you're going to make a serious dent in your calories for the day, enough to make a difference. Um, but really, you only want to be changing your calorie count by, you know, one to 200 calories a day for weight loss. You don't want to go more than that. Otherwise, you, you risk making yourself very hungry and failing at some point. So I recommend not counting calories because I don't think you can get that accuracy even with counting calories. And I just think it's, a, it's, it's not a good life too. Just focus on real food and, um, you know, you know, you know what rich foods taste like. Just cut down on those if that's, if that's something you're worried about. So I hope that answered your question. Um, somewhere's in my chat room. I can't see the bottom of the chat room anymore. Um, but if, it, uh, we're already like 10 minutes over, and um, I'm not sure how much uh, <laughs> hard drive space I've left on my computer. Um, so I'm going to wrap up soon, unless you guys have any more questions. But that was a great session. Thank you, guys. Um, okay, great. 
So thank you all for tuning in. Uh, just to remind you, the next show is next Tuesday, a little earlier than normal, at noon. And I'm going to be talking to a, a summer tomato reader, Patrick Haug, about his 60 pounds of weight loss. And we're going to figure out how we did that. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and be healthy. Over and out. <laughs>